All right, we're back in Ground Scaravich's stage to collect the rest of the parts. This entire video is going to be part collection, and there's actually a lot for me to say, so you might find it a little interesting to watch. Uh, at the very least, I managed to get all of the... get into all of the rooms in Scaravich's stage that I was not able to before, and the room with the teleporter is in the fourth totem pole, so... Uh, that that made things very convenient for me. I only had to do the stage one additional time. So the, the first thing I want to point out about this is that the the platform that X is currently standing on is not always there, and if it's not there, a unarmored X can't make it through the stage. And I derped. But um, see, see now you're gonna see me using a little glitch with a magma blade in the segment. If you rapidly fire the magma blade, you will hover in midair. It's very useful for more than a few places. And it, it, it gets me thinking, there are just so many jumps that you, that armored unarmored X can't make. There's so many places where he either needs an armor or some sort of physics bug, and there's, and there's overhangs like that all over the place. So I have to wonder why make make it that way. You know, what would be the point? Uh, anyways, you can obviously see that Metal Shark Player's nightmare effect is back to haunt me. And destroying the bo the metal boxes with armor unarmored X is painful because the metal anchor, the weapon uh, the weapon uh, from Metal Shark Player is very bad at destroying them unless you charge it, and I have unarmored X. So charging is a charging special weapons is a no-no. <sighs> and you'll have to forgive me if I start running at the mouth because there there are actually things to say here, and I have to say a lot in a small amount of time. Obviously not not here because it's just the standard, you know getting killed stupidly. So, I finally bust out Commander Yanmark we Yanmark's weapon. The, it actually is a very nice weapon for this part. Of course... Oh, and that heart tank. It's just sitting there, not hidden at all. Of course, if it were hidden, that'd be worse, because you don't always get into this section of the level. You don't always go you don't always go into that room, so it's completely luck based whether you find the heart tank or not. And uh <laughs> crap, I was gonna say something else. Oh well. So uh Okay, why don't I just mention this? Um I'm not- I'm only going to show you the bosses, the boss of the alternate routes once, because he is always the same if the final stage is unlocked. If you ha don't have the final stage unlocked, going, going through the teleporters will take you to first Nightmare Zero, then High Max, and then a third boss, who is always the same after that. And if you unlock the final stage without unlocking zero, then you've lost zero entirely. So, that isn't exactly very cool. So here's why the metal anchor sucks for taking out the boxes. It's a bouncing anchor. That's it. If you charge it, you get a swarm of metallic storm eagles. That's pretty nice. Now, I wanted to actually go through these alternate routes on extreme mode to make things interesting, but unfortunately, you cannot switch difficulties mid-save. I initially thought you could, but darn shame that. And you really should be able to. And extreme mode probably would be pretty interesting because it, fl it floods the it floods the Central Museum with nightmares like crazy, and it doubles all of their health, and gives them even more annoying attacks. 
that sounds lazy, but the rest of Extreme Mode is actually interesting because bosses get new attacks and such. And I just showed off that um, the Yanmar option does in fact destroy those praying, those praying mantises permanently. They don't respawn if you use the Yanmar option, which you get in this very stage anyways. There's a Reploid and a Sub-Tank obtained with uh, Zero's double jump, assisted by the Speedster part. Uh, the Speedster is a power-up part that increases horizontal movement, even in the air, so that's helpful. This is a rather silly Alia conversation. Yeah, thanks Alia, that was really helpful. See, that reaffirms my theory that this is more or less the tutorial stage with conversations like that. But I didn't get to that Reploid until, like, way later in the game. So, thanks, tutorial. Ah, uh, anyways. More enemies that are just dying like bugs. Because they are bugs. Woohoo, pun. There's a Reploid right next to a Nightmare that you're totally going to run into and hurt yourself. And we catch the portal, portal on the way down. This this um, area is like, it, it's very horrible. You, you can see that the rain, that's Rainy Turloid's Nightmare effect, and it pushes you back. A la Toad Man or Wire Sponge's stages, if you want to compare it to an earlier Mega Man game. And considering these overhangs and the enemy placement, you can imagine what hell I would be going through without some sort of mobility upgrade, like the speedster part. Praying Mantis has its last laugh and we advance. Okay, the magma area. I mentioned that there was a variation to the third mini-boss, and as a matter of fact, there is. Now he bounces around and makes it even more annoying to avoid him. But it turns out that uh, there is a Reploid in here as well, so you're going to inevitably, inevitably be playing this stage three times in order to get all of the Reploids. Once, once going through the stage normally, once for the Reploid that you missed before, and a third time for the alternate route through the blue portal, which is right here. I don't show myself going to the portal because you already saw that. You saw where the portal was. So why do I have to go through through all of that again? And we have more fire pillars. These bugs, by the way, are Commander Gamark's nightmare effect. They're not annoying for Zero because Zero has a melee weapon. They're more annoying for X because he has to deal with sub tanks that are not totally hidden at all. Those are supposed to be upgrades. You don't put upgrades in the middle of the open area. Okay. This is the secondary area for Rainy Turloid stage. You have to find those transmitters to destroy them and remove the shield from the weather control device again. But, uh, you've probably noticed the lights by now. That's Infinity Maginion's nightmare effect. I wanted to show show it off, so I figured, hey, I gotta go through Rainy Turloid stage again, and he's affected by Maginion's nightmare effect. But no, the lights make it almost impossible to see the transmitters. They're like in the blackened areas, and they're so tiny you have to run around in the dark. It's not fun, and it took forever. Uh, good thing I had the shadow armor. That's the second armor that you can pick up for X. Uh, you might have picked up on its abilities already, but uh, the main feature is that it is immune to the spikes. This is one of the ways you can get past the spike wall in Gates Lab. It's very helpful. Uh, the shadow armor's attacks mostly have to do with the saber. Its charge shot is a very overpowered saber slash. It shoots ninja stars with his regular buster shot, which resemble some weapon from X3, which I can't name right now. 
uh, we'll be seeing it in combat when I go to Blizzard Wolfang's stage. Hidden in this particular area is the Reploid holding the Hyper Dash, which uh, it's a power up part that you really, really need. That's really all I can say. Here's a sub tank in action. Uh, other notable abilities of the Shadow Armor include hanging to a wall without sliding down it. Uh, it can also super jump and cling to the ceiling, which just so happens to be one of Zero's weapons. Yeah, I don't get it either. But you can't go through the door uh, at the bottom right there until the weather control device is destroyed, so I'll just be fumbling around for a, a few more minutes. And there is the last transmitter. I can finally get out of here. We can say goodbye to those stupid purple robots. They won't. Uh, they finally can't annoy us any longer than they already have, I hope. And I'm rambling. So, Blizzard Wolfgang's alternate area. Now you can actually see the Shadow Armor well. Okay. Getting in here is only possible with Blaze Heatnix's Nightmare Effect. I did not mention that before. But Blaze Heatnix's effect has to be up in order for the teleporter to be accessible. And that's a pretty long spike pit to cross without the shadow armor, but the final Reploid gave us the jumper part, which increases jump height. If you're not using the shadow armor or zero, you need that in Gate Slab. So we can finally see who the boss I've been talking about the whole time, uh, not talking about the whole time is. It's Dynamo from X5. I'd be upset that they were recycling an X5 boss, Dynamo is actually pretty cool, and he has a great theme song, and he's going to be very, very helpful to me. Oh yes, he's been collecting Nightmare Souls in an attempt to increase his own rank. I mean power level. So what do we do? Well, first we abuse dodgy hit detection. Avoiding that, avoiding this little attack right here is very tricky in Wolfang's stage specifically, because you can't cling to the walls in this particular boss room. Why? I don't know. But, uh... Yeah. Hitting him with either his weakness, which is Rainy Turloid's weapon, or a charge shot from the Shadow Armor, because the Shadow Armor can't use weapons anyways, will cause him to drop a green Nightmare Soul. That's worth 200 Nightmare Souls, and you can do it three times per battle, but I don't get Dynamo to do it a third time, so I just kill him with a Giga Attack. That's how you grind souls. You fight Dynamo over and over and over again until you have what you want. No, I'm not going to grind souls. Who does that? So, that's all of the alternate areas. I've shown you Dynamo. I've shown you where all the Reploids are. We've gotten all the parts, and we can finally advance to Gate Slab in the next video. I need a drink.